Hi, it's Katrina. Number 9. Mez Ainak. Mez Ainak is a very ancient city located practically in the middle of nowhere. It's in a barren region just 25 miles southeast of Afghanistan's capital and contains the country's largest copper deposit. It's also home to an ancient settlement dating back at least 5,000 years. At ground level, the 100-acre monastery complex contains over 400 Buddha statues, as well as the ruins of homes and markets. Underneath the impressive Buddhist settlement, archaeologists have found evidence of a Bronze Age site, including a primitive copper smelter. This site was situated along the legendary Silk Road, which explains the array of unique artifacts discovered there from different parts of the world, including China and India. Mez Ainak was massive, well-guarded, and immensely wealthy. A team of geologists discovered the settlement in 1973. Sadly, its historic value comes second to the desire to mine copper, and mining activities are destroying the site. Archaeologists photographed the site and excavated any artifacts that they could, but sadly the rest of it will likely be lost to history. Number 8. Sloth Tunnel During the 1930s, researchers learned about a collection of large tunnels throughout South America. They assumed that the 8 to 10,000-year-old structures represented archaeological sites. In other words, that the tunnels were man-made. After all, they looked almost too perfect to have been created naturally. Plus, there were scraping marks in certain areas that looked like they had been done with tools. Experts struggled to identify any geological processes that could have been at play here, and they assumed that no animal could make a tunnel that big. But they couldn't have been more wrong. They realized this in 2010, when geologist Amilcar Adami explored one of the structures, known as Paleo Burrows, in the northwestern Brazilian state of Rondonia. It's the largest known Paleo Burrow in the Amazon, and it's twice as big as the next largest tunnel of its kind in Brazil, according to Andrew Jenner at Discover Magazine. Adami went into the investigation convinced that a natural process had formed the structure, but he noticed that he was looking at something that looked very deliberately made. It appeared to have claw marks on the walls, not from tools at all. And it's one of just 1,500 paleo burrows that have been identified. The smaller tunnels measure up to 5 feet in diameter, while the larger ones are as much as 6.5 feet high and 13 feet wide. And they're up to 330 feet long. So, if ancient humans didn't build these huge tunnels, then who did? Based on the markings, scientists believe that giant sloths and giant armadillos created the structures which represent some of the only known evidence of ancient mammal burrows. The largest tunnels were likely built by massive sloths from the extinct Lestodon genus of megafauna. These creatures grew up to 15 feet long and often weighed over 5,700 pounds. Imagine a sloth that size! And as big as they were, digging the tunnels was still a monumental task. In fact, many giant sloths dedicated their entire lives exclusively to digging. And if they're as slow as we know them to be, this feat was beyond impressive. Heinrich Frank, who led a recent study on the Paleo Burrows, said that researchers aren't quite sure why animals were so devoted to crafting such large tunnels, especially since they were bigger than they would have needed to be in order to escape the climate, humidity, or predators. For now, their purpose and enormous size remains a mystery. Number 7. Child Sacrifice Victims Two years ago, archaeologists discovered the mummy of a young man in Cajamarquilla, Peru, on the outskirts of Lima. At first, the team believed that he had died sometime between the ages of 18 and 22, but they later determined that he was actually around 35 years old when he was mummified. They nicknamed him Chabelo. He lived around 1,000 years ago when Cajamarquilla had four pyramids and was an important trade center for Peru's coastal and mountainous regions. Near Chabelo's grave, the team recently discovered the remains of 20 people who may have been human sacrifice victims, including 12 adults and 8 children. There are signs of violence on the children's bones, including skull fractures, indicating that they may have been sacrificed as part of a funerary ritual. Did this have anything to do with Chabelo? Did he want child sacrifice victims? Experts aren't sure. Naturally, almost any member of modern society is put off by the thought of killing a child. While it's hard for any sane person today to wrap their head around the concept, excavation leader Peter Van Dalen Luna explained that ancient Andean societies had a different way of seeing the world than we do. They also understood death much differently and saw it as a parallel world to the living. Around only 1% of the archaeological site has been excavated so far, 
and there are likely more fascinating discoveries waiting to be made. Researchers plan to perform DNA analysis and other tests on the remains they found to learn more about the people that were buried here. Number 6. World's Oldest Stegosaur Scientists recently discovered the oldest known stegosaur fossil in Asia, and possibly the entire world. The remains belong to a previously unknown species called Bashanosaurus primitivus, which roamed the Earth around 168 million years ago. The discovery is helping researchers learn more about the origin and evolution of these dinosaurs. Who doesn't love stegosaurs? Measuring roughly 9 feet from nose to tail, the fossil represents a relatively small specimen. But experts are unsure whether the creature was an adult or a juvenile when it died, meaning it may have still been growing. It existed during the Middle Jurassic, appearing on the fossil record much earlier than the most commonly known Stegosaurus and had more primitive physical features than other species that came along later. On the other hand, the creature also has similarities to the first armored dinosaurs, which appeared roughly 20 million years later. B. primitivus is one of the earliest diverging stegosaurs, along with the fossils of two other species that were found in China, including the Chongqing lizard. This adds to a growing body of evidence that the first stegosaurs may have evolved in Asia. If you could bring back any dinosaur, which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more discoveries coming up. Number 5. Egyptian Water Wells Some of ancient Egypt's pharaohs used a roadway called the Horus Military Route, which connected Egypt and Palestine. It was marked by several strongholds, including Tel El Kedwa. It was one of five fortresses in the North Sinai region. While working at the site recently, Archaeologists discovered five ancient water wells dating back to the 13th century BC. The team believes that the wells were built before the reign of Seti I, who started ruling in 1292 BC. They were found outside the walls of the fortress, which was part of the ancient Egyptian system for protecting its eastern frontier and guarding access to its northern region. Four of the five wells were filled to the brim with sand. This was to prevent the Persian army from accessing water when it invaded the region in 525 BC. Clever, huh? The fifth well, which was not filled with sand, was roughly 10 feet deep. Inside it, the team found 13 pottery rings and several clay pots dating back to Egypt's 26th dynasty, also known as the Saite period, which lasted from 664 to 525 BC. This wasn't the only thing that set the fifth well apart from the others, though. It was built haphazardly and in a style that wasn't customary for the time period, according to the archaeological excavation leader. Another team recently found a large storage center and a copper smelting workshop with several kilns at Tel El Kedwa. They date back to the same period as the wells. These discoveries are part of a larger ongoing effort to develop Egypt's North Sinai province, which contains numerous important pharaonic sites in hopes of attracting increased tourism to the region. What do you think? You want to go check it out? Number 4. Transylvanian Turtle Around 66 million years ago, an asteroid slammed into what is now Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, leaving behind a massive crater measuring 110 miles in diameter and 12 miles deep. But the devastating effects extended far beyond the crater and touched every corner of the globe, wiping out an estimated 75% of all life on Earth. Not many creatures survived what's come to be known as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, but some did, and scientists are still figuring out who these lucky few were. They recently added another species to the list during a study of a 70-million-year-old turtle fossil that was discovered in modern-day Romania. It was found at a site known as the Hateg Basin, which researchers believe was a separate island before it shifted toward what eventually became Eastern Europe. The newly described freshwater species, dubbed Dortoca vremiri, belonged to a family known as side-necked turtles. It contains 16 known species found throughout Australia, South America, and Africa. The first known fossil was found way back in 1990, and it dates back to several million years before the extinction event. Researchers believe that it survived due to the recent discovery of another species that appears to have evolved from it. D. Vermeeri likely lived alongside another ancient tortoise, which unfortunately went extinct along with most terrestrial animals of the time. The surviving species likely survived because it lived primarily in fresh water, and this seems to have increased an animal's likelihood of making it through the extinction event. What can we say? 
Turtles are pretty tough. Number 3. Out-of-place plants The plant genus Ceratopetalum contains nine known modern species, which are all found in eastern Australia and New Guinea. And until recently, researchers believe that the family these plants come from only ever existed in the southern hemisphere, including during ancient times. Which is why they were surprised to discover a previously unknown fossilized Ceratopetalum species on Susha Island in Washington State of all places. The fruit lived during the late Cretaceous period, which lasted from 100 million to 66 million years ago, when the dinosaurs went extinct. Its discovery is causing experts to rethink the ancient distribution of Ceratopetalum plants, especially when it comes to answering the question of how some species ended up in the Northern Hemisphere. It truly goes to show how even the experts know relatively little about our planet's past. These plants thrive in tropical environments, which you certainly won't find in modern-day Washington State. The genus is part of a group known as Paleo-Antarctic Rainforest Lineages, or PARLs, which first appeared when the supercontinent Gondwana still existed. This means these plants have been around a long time. They spread northward to Australia, South America, and Southern Africa as the region occupying what is now Antarctica got colder. Now, scientists are trying to determine whether the fossils found in Washington reflect a bigger spread than they realized, or if they happen to be a few stray plants that made their way unusually far from home. Study co-author Brian Atkinson compared the discovery to finding a penguin in North America. The next step is to perform additional research into this little study topic to hopefully learn more about it. Number 2. Prehistoric Drum 5,000 years ago, three children died and were buried together in what is now Yorkshire, England. Their grave was discovered in 2015 during a routine excavation at the village of Burton Agnes. In it, archaeologists found a drum that they believe was a piece of sculptural art rather than an actual musical instrument. It's similar to three others that were found just 15 miles away in Folkton back in 1889. Project curator Jennifer Wexler told CNN that the artifacts speak to an art form that was apparently very common throughout the British Isles during the 3rd millennium BC. The more recently discovered drum is covered in motifs that resemble similar objects that have been found in Ireland and Scotland, further indicating how widespread the artistic style was. The Burton Agnes children and the drum date back to sometime between 3005 and 2890 BC, around the same time that Stonehenge was built. They are around 500 years older than the previously discovered Folkton drums. The oldest child was between 10 and 12 years old, while the others were aged between 6 and 9 and between 3 and 5. Archaeologists found the two younger kids holding hands. They were positioned in the arms of the eldest child. A very touching and sad scene. Their remains will undergo DNA analysis to help establish their relationship to each other. The team believes that the drum may have been a children's toy. They described it as the most important piece of prehistoric art found in Britain in the last century, noting its exceptional rarity. At the time the kids died, burials were extremely rare, and they were typically reserved for children. And grave goods were equally scarce, especially in the case of the elaborately decorated drum which could easily be considered a once-in-a-lifetime find. Number 1. Egyptian Notepads Archaeologists have just announced the discovery of the largest collection of ancient Egyptian notepads since the early 20th century. Found in the lost city of Athribis in central Egypt, the items include over 18,000 inscribed pottery fragments, many of which appear to have been written by students. Known as Ostraka, the inked shards were made using more affordable and accessible writing materials than papyrus, including pieces of broken jars and other vessels. The so-called notepads include shopping lists, trading records, receipts, copies of literature and writing, and drawing lessons. The notepads contain writing in an array of languages, including Greek, Arabic, and Coptic, which according to researchers reflects the city's multicultural and perhaps turbulent history. Based on the amount of academic pieces, it seems as though the Athribis site represents the remnants of an ancient school. The scholarly slabs include lists of months, numbers, math problems, and writing and grammar exercises. They also contained a bird alphabet, where a different assigned bird corresponded with each letter. Most of the notes were written in an administrative script called Demotic, which was used primarily during the reign of Ptolemy XII, more famously known as Cleopatra's father. He ruled from 81 to 59 BC, and then again from 55 to 51 BC. At the time, Athribis was the capital of its state. 
And while demotic was the most popular writing system, school children were taught a simplified form of hieroglyphics. Some of the writing exercises were repeated, with the student writing the same characters over and over on the front and back of the slab. Perhaps it was the ancients' version of making a badly behaved student write on the chalkboard. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to learn about more fascinating ancient discoveries, let me know in the comments below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!